Doing Justin here today. We are checking out Thunderstruck by ACDC. We're going to be looking at the six main riffs that make up the song. We're not looking at the solo in this particular lesson, uh, but the idea here is if you learn the individual chunks that you need, the actual riffs, then by listening to the original recording, you'll be able to put them together. There's a lot of layers on the original recording where you have, uh, particularly that riff is is nearly all of the way through the song. It's a little bit uh, scary when you listen out for it. How how often it's used, even underneath chords that. Perhaps it sounds kind of like on the surface, like it shouldn't still fit together, but it sounds incredible, you know. So uh, let's get to a close up and check out how to play these riffs one at a time. Okay, riff number one. <laughs> Okay, so this is the intro part, and this is a really good one for getting used to the technique that you need to play the main riff. Okay, so we're simply playing the first finger in the fourth fret of the second string with a down pick, and then we lift that finger off, and with an up pick we play the open B string. Little finger goes down on the seventh fret, of the, still on the second string, and we play it with a down pick, and then we lift it off and play the open B string. Okay, that is the first step, is just getting used to this. The really key thing here is doing it slowly until you can get it accurate, because if you try and speed up too soon, you'll just make it messy. And when you play messy fast, it just doesn't sound good. You really got to try and get it nice and clean. So. Just plenty of doing that over and over again and really making sure that every note, including the open strings, are sounding out clear. Um, if you don't lift your fingers off and uh, uh, lift them far enough, particularly on this one, there's a couple of harmonics that you might find ringing out as well. So really making sure they're not there as well and just... Really slowly until you've got it nice and clear. and then we're gradually working it up to speed. Now what's going on is it's doing that for two bars, so one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then it just moves up one fret. So now it's on the fifth fret and the eighth fret. And back. And another thing just to point out at this stage, before I'd recommend you spend a bit of time thinking about this riff as well. Uh, trying to keep your hands relaxed, because if you get too tense you're going to find fatigue sets in real fast with a riff like this. Because it's pretty intense, it's, it's picking and, and it's the synchronized, it'll expose any synchronization issues between the hands, you know. Um, it is, it's a tricky riff, it's not as simple as it might sound. Uh, it can be done a lot easier if you use hammer-ons and flick-offs, but I'll show you that uh, a little later on. Um, but yeah, the, the, this first stage, just really slowly and carefully. Okay, then we're into Riff 2. Now Riff 2 is the one that everybody kind of hears, I guess. Um, there's a few different fingering options that I've seen people use. Uh, I think I'm using pretty similar to what uh, Angus uses. It's exactly the same idea of this uh, playing a fretted note and followed by an open string in between, but you want to get the pattern right. So the pattern is going to be 12th fret, 10, 9, 10, 9, 7, 9, 5, 7, 
So that pattern again, 12, 10, 9, 10, 9, 7, 9, 5, 7, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4. So I suggest you write that down again, okay? 12, 10, 9, 10, 9, 7, Nine, five, seven, four, five, four, five, four, five, four. Okay, using third finger, first, stepping back with the first, second, first, step back, first, third, step back, first, third, step back, four, five, it's first and second finger for that last part. Okay, you've got to practice it real slowly and make sure you get it accurate before you even think about starting to try and play it fast. It really is the big key with a riff like that. Now, I said I'd mention to the, uh, the hammer-on and flick-off version because I played this in bands for years and I'd seen the video clip of Angus using his, uh, um, his picking hand to, to salute the audience and was doing it all with hammer-ons and flick-offs. It's quite possible to do it that way. If you're going to do that, you probably want to mute the strings either side using your fingers. So put your first finger on the thinner string, thumb on the third string, string and the edge of your thumb there muting all of the other strings so that you can okay so you're just using hammer-ons and flick-offs for the same thing 12 10 9 10 9 7 9 5 7 It's actually a lot easier that way, I think, anyway, uh, than, than picking it because the picking gets, it, it can get pretty tiring for me, you know, after I'm playing along with the song uh, about halfway through it, it's, even if I'm really focused on trying to stay relaxed, it still seems to, a little bit of tension picks up there, so you might find a similar sort of thing, but it's all just down to practice, playing that riff. <laughs> So when you go from the jump from here, where your first finger's all of the way there and you've got to get to this, try and focus your eyes on the point, on the 12th fret there. So when you're here, I'm looking at the 12th fret, then I move my finger there. If you try and follow your finger up, it'll be very hard to stop at the right point. So you're, when you're all the way down there, just looking at the 12th fret and then move your, th your third finger there and you should get there. That's kind of like the, the little uh, key for getting that jump right. Okay, on to riff three. <laughs> Oh, I love this riff. This is my my favourite bit of the whole song. Is this one little groove here uh, played by Malcolm, uh, of course, the king of uh, rock rhythm guitar. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a fan with my Malcolm Young model Gretsch here. Um, so this is just simply a B power chord. But the way he plays the rhythm is just perfect for this tune. Uh, really, you know, against that really busy part that Angus is playing, just to have this such a tasty little groove going on. Um, and what's really important here is that you realise that the hand is moving pretty consistently. So it's still just moving that, it's kind of strumming over the three strings that we're playing, so the, the third, fourth and fifth strings only, okay, making sure the tip of your first finger is muting the thicker string as well in case you accidentally pluck that. Um, and what we're doing here is this little pattern of down, up, down, 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 up, 
up, down, down, down. Okay, so down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. It's a really, really hard one to try and teach this. I had a lot of trouble tabbing it out there for the, for the Aussie songbook as well because it's just a, it's a funny one to write down. It's all about just keeping that hand moving. <laughs> Having the little at the beginning there and then the two up accents. Such a great riff, I love playing that in a band. But anyway, um, that's a really, really important part of the tune. So make sure you, you check that out as well because it's a, a very dominant part alongside uh, Angus's uh, sh shreddy kind of a riff there. So uh, the other pieces of the puzzle that you need, uh, uh, riff four uh, is this. <laughs> Which is a B power chord, then A E. It sounds to me on the record like it might just be the one note, but I've always played an A power chord to E power chord. So. Okay, again, I'm not going to worry about trying to do the count there, just listen to the original recording. Okay, we'll do watch out for a few times that there's just a big B chord left hanging as well, so just let it to ring out for as long as it needs to, you know. You need a little bit of volume if you're going to let things ring out for a real long time, but uh, most of the times that's not needed. And do remember with ACDC, you're usually using a lot less distortion than you might think, okay? So don't always be looking to crank the gain right up because it's a very kind of a, it's a loud Marshall as opposed to a, a dirty Marshall, I think. Um, so uh, the next part that we're going to have a look at is riff number five, which is this. Oh, come in, please. Yeah, ladies, were too hot. You've been thunder. Okay, so this is just B, A, E. And I was shaking at the knees. A, B, A. Gonna come in, please. A B A B. Yeah, the ladies were too hot. A B A B. You've been thunderstruck. Really, really nice riff here for the chorus. This is riff number six. So, B power chord. Then A. Then lift off that finger. So we're just playing the open A string and the open D string and then an E. So one, two and three, four and... Okay, it feels a bit weird but as soon as you play it right, it, it, it's really just like the record. B, A, open strings, E, A, Very cool little riff. Again, not particularly difficult, but it really makes it rock. If you you got to get this stuff tight, you know that's the thing with ACDC is that simple ain't easy. You know to to play this and play it real well, real clean, and perfectly locked in on time it takes a little bit of work, and it's something that I think is well worth the effort. Okay, and the last riff that we're checking out today is this one. <laughs> Say B, 2nd fret, 4th fret on the thickest string, to an E power chord, 1, 2, 3, 
and four and one, two, three, four, B, two, three, and four and one, two, three, four. This really is an all time rock classic and it's a great fun one to play, but I hope you heed my advice and just start real slow because if you start trying to play the riff too fast too soon, it just becomes a big blur. And do spend a bit of time listening to the original recording as well to figure out where the puzzle pieces go because there's a lot of times where you can play that riff right through whole big sections, but as well, really listening to the tightness of the rhythm section, Malcolm's playing particularly, it's just so tight with the rest of the band, you know, it's just. It's as good as rock and roll gets, in, and this is you know, one of their biggest hits, so definitely well worthy of a little bit of, a, of study time and attention on, on this track. Listening to the original recording, trying to play along. Uh, one thing that I'll just mention quickly is the using uh, Transcribe software. So I use a program called Transcribe, which I can slow down tracks. So when I'm practicing this, this particular song, I can slow the track down a bit to 70% or 80% or whatever, and gradually work my way up while playing along with the original recording, which is a little bit more fun than just practicing along with the so that would be the, the recommended path, I think. Spend a little bit of time, particularly with the main riff, which is probably what most, uh, most of you are, are, are f watching this video for, is to learn that. So just making sure that you get it right very, very slowly first, that you're getting it all clean, and then have a go at playing along with the record at like 50% or 60%. Make sure that it's still really tight, and then move it up a little bit to 70%, move it up again, you know, as, as you're getting the, the riff really nice and tight. So uh, I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.